there is the absolutely best laboratory, as far as we know at least, in the whole cosmos, which you can have access to. Because the absolutely best laboratory in the whole cosmos, which has a direct line into whatever everything is, <coughs> that's a human being. And you have that with you. So anything <clears throat> that comes out of that laboratory has really <clears throat> great possibilities, even if it looks like a very small thing. Policies. You live in a society in which two understandings are underneath. And one of them is that science is really the only reliable, the only really established, the only really worthwhile kind of knowledge that we have. And it's very precious. The science that we have has, for some hundreds of years already, uh, uh, understood to base itself on empirical testing. And that's a democratic kind of a thing. That means you don't have to believe the person, whoever the person is, who claims something. It can be tested by people who don't even know that person. Uh, so this science that we have is the only basis for any kind of social policy that we have. There is now an official government uh, paid for gene pool. They are going to study all the genes, not just me. <laughs> The other basis on which, si on, on which the whole Western culture operates now is that persons are products of culture. So you supposedly are a product of culture. Uh, you're not a product of culture. And the fastest way I have of saying that is that we're all animals. And any of the animals are already somebody that's looking at you and is no, uh, whatever it is that looks out at you from this, from this uh, being is not a product of culture. I call that elaboration. The, the, the process of life is elaborated by culture. So plants live and they don't have perceptions. They be. A plant knows the water and the air and the earth and the sun by being what it is. And we are just like that, too. Our bodies are at least plants. You know, we're animals, and we're cultural and historical and economical and electrical and every other damn thing. But we're at least plants, which means that our bodies are directly connected to the universe. So culture and situations are added to that, and language is added to that, and words what I come do. Where do words come from? Well, they come out of the body. They come out of the, uh, the body that knows the situation. So this same body that's, that's a plant, literally I mean, is also an animal and is also linguistic and cultural. That same body. I'm trying to say a body, when you feel your body, it is already living out of the universe like a plant and it is already something that has you living in it like somebody looks out from an animal at you and it's already living in a human linguistic historical situation. There is a tendency when coming into the body to bypass everything and go directly to a peaceful place or directly to just body. And focusing is halfway in between. It's still body, but it's the body that carries the problem or the body that carries the situation. Body that does the everyday orienting in a situation. That's the body that lives the situation. And the one you go to so quickly, directly, that's a peaceful body in the universe past the situation. So I want to mark that we want both places.
And focusing comes from a philosophy. It's a philosophy, I could say, it's, first off, it's my philosophy, and then I would say, oh no, it's a philosophy that I saw that is possible and that you have all seen in some way. Uh, it's a philosophy that would understand how experience and concepts relate to each other. And most philosophy is a, a beautiful specialty with concepts. You might say philosophy is meta-concept. I want to point to is here is a philosophy that does that and brings everything we have about concepts but relates that to experiencing for which you can also say situations because the body experiences in situation or you can say practice uh, and then I put dot 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 so then we get all of them you can consider anything that we say no matter how precise as also having dot 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 after it so that we have the precision and then we still have the living that this precision brings and then the precision the concepts open the living they carry it further they make all sorts of things possible because it is how they talk to each other, how they inform each other. All the theories and concepts and methods, including focusing, any method that we force on somebody or push on somebody, any method that we use in such a way that the person disappears and we only have the method, is a violence that we don't want to do to people. Any method that's in a conversation with a person can help. And there I wouldn't be just with one method. I would say focusing is one way. Focusing is really two things. It's the awareness and to help the person have the awareness that there is in us this deep place where the body brings the sense of living just now. And this is always in the present. It has the past in it, of course, but it is now I feel the past, and now I feel the present. And this place has a rightness to it, a bodily rightness, like breathing, or like, like every physical process has its, its rightness. And yet it has the new situation in it, that just now, or this person here. And there new steps come, and they still have a rightness. If we can help that, that level of body awareness become free in a person, where they can speak from that place, then that's the deep part of focusing. We, we try to free the person not only from the outside violence, but also from the inside violence that they do to themselves. Dreams, ah, yeah. There's so much to say about dreams. What else, one other thing I could say? What matters most is to like the dream, to love the dream, to admire the dream, to say, gee, that's really wild. Aren't dreams wonderful? I could never have thought of such a thing. I have to say, okay, you have all learned this other kind of thinking which is only that you learn concepts and then you can repeat them. And the most that they ever expect from you is maybe you rearrange them a little bit. But that's not thinking. You are not thinking. Who is thinking? Well, the people who made up those concepts, they were thinking, right? These concepts that you teach and learn they didn't drop from heaven, they didn't, somebody thought that. The whole system is so made that they give you the impression that you can't do that. But in the book they tell you about some other person who's dead, and that person could think. How they do that, they're not talking about. And this is my revolution. They go somewhere, and when they come back, they have new concepts, new ideas, new terms, new words. 
you get to hear about it, but you don't get to go there. Because to go there is not these concepts. So what is it? You need to stand again in your own experience, in your own felt ongoingness, which is this intricate complexity inside of, of life. And you can still formulate what you know that hasn't been said and to put into the world what hasn't been said yet that you're carrying from your particular experience. But does it feel nice and comfortable? Well, let me see. I mean, up here I know I'm not nice and comfortable, but if I go down there, I mean, am I now nice and comfortable? Well, I think I'm all right, I'm doing fine, but on, on the other hand, I have to manage this whole scene, so I can't be too comfortable, so I'm talking from my head. I'm telling you, I know myself. I'm probably, you know, never mind that. Let's go down and see. It doesn't take very long. Well, it's, it's not bad down there, but it's going <laughs> 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 and and it's, it's got several things. It's sort of like the present moment here, don't talk too long, it says. But then it has little strings going to other things that aren't quite resolved. And we'll look at those later. But it likes the fact that I came, see? It's, it, that, that was okay.